Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am showing you a game-changing makeup hack that will absolutely make such a difference in how your makeup looks in person, up close, in real life. This is game-changing because it looks flawless, but looks incredibly skin-like. Now, this is a technique that has recently gone really viral, I guess I want to say. I think it was on TikTok. I actually don't have a TikTok, but my sister does, and I hear about all the latest TikTok stuff from her. But this is not a new technique by any means. This is something makeup artists have used in the past. I think like Scott Barnes, Makeup by Mario has made this a very popular technique. But recently, I guess, it's just been talked a lot about on TikTok. And this is kind of, kind of applying makeup in a reverse way, like the reverse foundation technique, you could call it. And this is absolutely perfect for any occasion. This is perfect for daytime or evening because of how skin-like your skin actually looks. We don't have a lot of product sitting on the skin. It's just a very natural way of applying makeup, but you can see that I still have structure on the skin. Everything looks very beautiful and natural in person that you can't actually detect that makeup sitting on top of the skin, which is some of my favorite makeup applications to do. I just like that more natural look. So this is going to be a game changer for you if you are looking for that flawless but natural makeup look that is perfect for any occasion. I really recommend you try it out for yourself to see how beautiful this looks in person. So if you want to see this game-changing makeup hack, just keep watching. So I'm starting off with a clean base. I did go ahead and do my eyebrows and prime my eyes. So I've just placed a little bit of foundation on my eyelids just to conceal any darkness there. Now the most important part when we are thinking of this makeup look is the skin prep because we are going to be applying products in a little bit of a different order. So we want our skin to be very hydrated. We want there to be a little bit of slip there so that the products blend with ease and we don't want products to stick or um, have a hard time blending out. So you just want to make sure that you prep your skin. I'm going to take my favorite Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint and I'm going to use this under the eyes to start with. So I just take a little bit of that and I apply this almost like I would an eye cream. I'm going to apply a little bit of a heavier layer, I guess you could say. And then I'm also going to apply a little bit of this just all over the skin because I want everything to be, like I said, nice and hydrated. And this just is a really nice, it's a hydrating primer, but it also blurs the skin and it brightens the skin and just perfects it a little bit without adding any coverage and it just sinks into the skin really nicely. It doesn't leave your skin feeling tacky. It doesn't leave your skin feeling too oily. So if you're someone with oily skin, I feel like this actually would be a great primer for you. For my concealer, I want to keep things really natural. So I'm going to take the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch and I'm taking this on this Clay de Peau Concealer Brush. I just applied a little bit of product and taking that underneath the eyes so I'm not going all the way up to my lash line here. I am only going where I am dark. And then I'm also bringing that into the outer corner. You can see I'm taking this into an uplifting little flick here because I want everything to be lifted. But I really like this concealer for this purpose. And I'm also going to take the brush that it comes with and take the excess product just to blend that on the under eyes, just to really blend it into the skin. This doesn't really, this applies product really nice, but it doesn't blend the product well into the skin so that it's like sitting in the skin, if that makes sense. Because um, I want the product to almost just become one with the skin. So this really helps because it's more dense. But I really like this concealer for this purpose because it's very similar to the Chanel Water Fresh Tint and that it's a very lightweight concealer. So it's virtually, again, undetectable. If you have extreme dark circles, this will not be enough coverage. This is probably um, light, buildable to medium coverage underneath the eyes, but it adds a little bit more coverage than this does here. And again, it looks very skin-like. It feels nice and hydrating on the under eyes, so it's just such a nice concealer when you want that skin-like effect because you can't detect that concealer and it just blends really, really nicely into the skin. For the next step, I am going to go in with an additional brightening concealer. If you don't have really dark under eyes, you could just leave it with that one light layer of concealer, or again, just go in with your concealer of choice. It does not have to be these two concealers that I'm using, but this is the Chanel Slubomage Le Corrector U in the shade number 20. 
And I'm going to take that again on that Clayto concealer brush. You can just use any flat brush. And I'm going to be a little more precise in where I'm applying it because I want just a little bit more brightness on my under eyes. Again, I do have a little bit more darkness. So for me, I just like to add an additional brightness here. And then again, you can add it just to that outer corner to kind of brighten up that outside corner here. Now, if you are someone that likes a little bit of brightness anywhere on your face in the center of your skin, if you like that highlighted look, you could go ahead and add that brightening concealer now. I don't tend to like that look, so I'm going to skip it, and then I'm just going to blend everything in with my sponge. This is just a damp beauty blender sponge, and I just like to press everything in so that it kind of becomes one with the skin and looks very skin-like. Even though I applied two concealers, I apply them in such thin layers that again, they are undetectable on the skin, virtually undetectable on the skin. Um, and it looks just really skin-like. It looks more natural than applying a really thick layer of just one concealer when I go in with those thin layers of product. Now when you see a lot of people do this technique, they are actually applying those products onto the skin without really blending them out first. If you've seen any of those videos, they apply the concealer and the bronzer and the blush all at once without blending it into the skin. My preference is to actually blend those products a little bit into the skin. Now with the concealer, I blend it completely into the skin, but with the bronzer and the blush, you'll see that I don't go in and blend. I don't blend it all the way into the skin, but I don't leave those really harsh lines where I'm applying like stripes of product because I actually feel like that looks quite heavy on the skin and you're not gonna have the easiest time blending. I understand why people do it because it's more visually appealing for a video when you see these harsh stripes. I feel like that's more, I don't know, people wanna click on those videos. But in reality, if you are looking for that skin-like finish that actually looks like skin in person and that looks really natural but flawless, and it looks flawless without having that ton of coverage, it just looks, it truly does look skin-like, you kind of want to blend that product into the skin a little bit. So I'm going to take the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream Bronzing, Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream in the shade, I think this is the original 390. And I'm going to take this on a Merit, I think it's called the number one brush, it doesn't have a name on it. I'm going to take this, and before I apply foundation, I'm going to apply this onto the skin. And I am going to be, I guess you could say a little bit heavier handed with this product, because I am going to go in with a foundation over top. And I'm just going to, pretty simply, apply this onto the skin like I would a bronzer, like I would when I'm applying it over top of my foundation, but I'm not blending it completely into the skin yet. So you can see that there is going to be a little bit of harshness. You can, it's not like those intense stripes that I've seen a lot of people do, but you can tell it's not completely blended into the skin. And doing this underneath your foundation is going to actually allow you to use less foundation when you go in with foundation just because you'll already have that structure built on your skin and sometimes when we apply foundation onto the skin before we have structure we almost feel like we need to blank out our canvas completely we want to cover up that redness but actually you can see that even though I have that concealer applied and this bronzer, it already looks like I don't need that much foundation. So if you're someone that applies a lot of foundation, this will be a really helpful guide to allow you just not to apply as much foundation later on, which really helps in that more natural appearance on the skin. So I'm taking, I'm not taking as much product as I did when I applied this onto the cheeks. I'm just applying a little bit of that product, taking off that excess. And for the jawline, you don't want to apply it I see a lot of people apply their product right on the jawline here. You don't want to do that because it's going to look like such a harsh line. You want to almost carry it under the jawline to add a little bit of structure there. So you want to apply it there. You don't want to apply it to the sides because it just looks like you have like a little bit of a dirty face there if you apply it actually onto the jawline. And then just blend that excess down. That's typically how I apply bronzer there. You don't have to apply it to your jawline. I'm just showing you all the steps. But there, you can see that I have that structure on my skin. It's not those super harsh stripes, but you can see that structure currently. And then for the cream blush that I'm going to use, I am going to take the Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh in the shade Playground. 
Now, the interesting thing about this product is that I actually don't like it over top of foundation. I think it looks really heavy. I feel like it accentuates pores on the skin. It just always looks like such a heavy product when I apply it onto the skin over top of foundation. But this works really nice if I want to apply it in this technique. So what I like to do with this, I don't like to apply straight onto the cheeks because I feel like that's just a recipe for disaster. You're guaranteed to apply a little bit more product, um, more product than you need. So I'm gonna warm up that product on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to take a brush. This is a Wayne Goss 13 brush. And I'm going to get that product onto the brush, distribute a little bit there, and then I'm going to apply it onto the skin. Just get it onto the cheeks here. And again, you can see I'm going in that more uplifting shape to give my face that more lifted look and to get some structure there. So I'm basically applying it over top of that cream bronzer. And again with this, you're probably gonna go in with a little bit more intensity, but I'm not doing those really intense, bright, bright, bright cheeks that are like circles that you have seen some people doing, but it is going to look a little bit harsher at first. But you can see this gives me a nice flush. And again, now that I have those products on my skin, I do see that I obviously need to blend a little bit, but I also see that my skin looks like it has structure to it and I feel like I don't require as much coverage. So from here, what we are going to do is blend that bronzer and the blush into the skin. But to do this, you want to choose a foundation that, I don't wanna say it's dewy, but it has a little bit more hydration so it's going to give you more of a natural finish. You don't wanna choose a matte foundation only because um, with the matte foundation, it might have the tendency to not blend at these products as well into the skin because it might just dry down in certain areas. If you go in with something a little bit more hydrating, it's going to give you enough of that um, emollient so that it will be a lot easier to blend into the skin. And you also want to choose something that's a little bit lighter in coverage. I wouldn't necessarily say you need to choose a sheer coverage foundation, but I would go for something light to medium coverage you probably don't want a full coverage foundation because then you're just going to completely cover up all this structure that you've built on the skin and then you'll just require to go in with additional products over top and we want to try to not add products over top after we're done with this so the best foundations to use is something with a light to medium coverage that has a little bit of an emollient to it but again we still want that really blurred effect on the skin because i like that blurred effect i like things to look a little bit filtered on the skin so my foundations of choice would be either the chanel Sublimage la sans detente this would be a beautiful definitely this would be my choice if i was going if i was wearing this um, face for an evening event because this has a little bit more coverage to it, more of a light buildable to medium coverage, and it just has such an elegant finish to it. It is very gorgeous. If I was going for a more everyday look, I would go for the Chantecaille Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation because this is definitely a sheer buildable to light coverage foundation, and this is just going to blend these products really well into the skin, and it's not going to add, it's not going to cover up the structure that we've added to the skin. So I'm going to go in with the, no, this is the Chantecai Future Skin Oil Free Gel Foundation. This is in the shade of Vanilla. And I'm going to, you can even mix these two together. That would be really beautiful as well. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this onto the palm of my hand. Go in with my Beauty Blender sponge. For this step, you could use a sponge or a brush, whatever you prefer. I just prefer the finish with a sponge and you, want to be a little more careful so you can't really go in haphazardly you need to kind of look where you're applying and you are going to start by applying the foundation in between the products that you've applied so we're not going to apply this over top of the bronzer and blush we're just going to apply around it to kind of soften up the look of that harshness of these products just sitting on the skin we're applying this foundation in between the lines to soften everything up. So again, I'm not applying over top of the bronzer or the blush. I'm just going around the edges to start. As you can see that everything is starting to look a little bit softer. And then with the excess product, once I barely have anything over my sponge, then I can go over top to really soften things up. But again, I'm gonna be careful. So I'm gonna just look to make sure I'm not softening it too much where I completely cover up that structure that we've applied. 
but I'm just really softening it. And if you are someone that requires a little bit more coverage, maybe you have post-blemish pigmentation or you suffer from melasma, you can go in with a pinpoint concealer. I would recommend the Clé de Peau. Where is that concealer? The Clé de Peau, the concealer. This just has really great coverage. It has a lot of pigmentation. Um, fantastic, fantastic if you're looking for something to pinpoint. So I'm going to leave everything here because I think everything on the skin looks really beautifully blended in. It's not completely blended into the skin where you can't even see that structure, but it looks like I don't really have makeup on. Everything looks so smooth and flawless. And because I went in with such minimal foundation in the front of my face, it doesn't look like I have that much makeup on, which is just such a cool technique. So I really love this for, again, those more natural makeup days when you want to look flawless, but you still want to look natural. You want to look beautiful in real life in person. A lot of the time, makeup that we see on YouTube in real life actually looks quite heavy. So this is a great look if you are going to be even outdoors, this is beautiful and natural daylight because it is so subtle and soft on the skin and we don't have a lot of makeup actually on the skin. Even though it might have looked like we applied a lot of makeup, we actually didn't because we didn't apply foundation all over the entire face like you normally would. We're just kind of applying it in specific areas and then very softly over the edges where we applied that bronzer and blush. And it just looks like such a beautiful, natural result. It is so lovely. So, well, I think everything looks absolutely beautiful right now. I do want to set down with a little bit of powder just because my under eyes, I feel like need a little bit of powder. I don't like anything to be too dewy or too luminous in that area because I think it just can actually emphasize texture. So I'm gonna take the Rodeal, this is the glass powder, the loose setting powder. And I'm going to take a little bit of this on my damp sponge. So. I'm going to first pat out any of the creases. You can also use a warm fingertip. Make sure that there are no, like there's no extra products sitting in any of the lines underneath your eyes. So I like to pat everything in. Go over the smile lines as well, just to get any excess product, if there is excess product sitting in that area. And then on the area of the sponge where I didn't apply concealer, I'm going to take that powder onto my brush or onto my sponge. And then what I like to do, get all that excess powder off so you can barely see the powder sitting on the sponge. This will ensure that you're not applying too much powder underneath your eyes because if you apply too much powder under the eyes, it's just going to accentuate lines and make them look worse. This will press that powder into your under eyes so it's not sitting on top and it's not going to sit in creases and this just gets like absorbed into the skin almost. So it looks so much better than if you were to set your under eyes with a brush. I just think setting your under eyes with a brush just ends up making it look very heavy because it almost sits on top of the under eyes. It, the powder doesn't get pressed into the skin. So this will really help with that really blurred look. So if you like the look of poreless blurred skin, but you also don't like the look of powder on your under eyes, this is the technique you need to try. So I just think everything already looks so much better. You can just apply a little bit of that powder to the center of your face as well. So for me, I think everything looks beautiful on the skin. We still have a, that structure on the skin. It looks very skin-like and blurred and beautiful in person especially. So if someone were to sit right up close to you, you're not gonna see heavy makeup sitting on the skin. It's gorgeous. You always hear me talk about in my videos at the end of my makeup application, I like to buff everything into the skin just to ensure that there's no harsh lines and everything becomes one so that all the products meld into each other so we don't get that detectable line from the bronzer, blush, and highlight. But with this technique, we don't need to use the buffing technique because I almost use that foundation as I would buffing like buffing the powder into my skin, if that makes sense. That almost is the buffing technique, but it looks even more natural because I'm just using that foundation to get that technique down. Now, additionally, you could always go over top with a powder bronzer if you just want to set everything in place. Maybe you're going out for the evening and you want things to just have a little bit more structure. But for this look, I'm going to leave everything as is. Now, I did not add a cream highlight underneath that technique because I feel like with the highlight underneath the foundation, it actually would just distribute that highlight like onto the skin. So then you'd have shimmer particles sitting on your skin, which I would not enjoy. So either go over top with a cream highlight. If you guys have any suggestions for cream highlight, I would love to hear from you because 
All the ones I've tried, I don't really love. I just kind of prefer my powder highlight. So I'm gonna take this Chantecaille Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder because this is the most sophisticated, very, 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 very soft highlight powder that I have in my collection. It almost, it's just a powder with a bit of a glow. I wouldn't even call it really a typical highlighting powder because it has this ever so soft sheen. But the best thing about this is its blurring capability. So I'm just going to take this on a Sonia G mini cheek. And because it's so subtle and it also is a blurring glow powder, you can be a little bit more heavy handed with this. So I'm going to apply it to the tops of the cheeks so that I get that brightness. So it's going to add like that dimension back to my skin because I have that bronzed effect. But I want to add a little bit of lightness and brightness to add a bit more bone structure again back to the skin. And this looks undetectable on the skin. It doesn't look like an obvious powder. It is so finely milled, very, very soft and gentle. Oh, the most beautiful, beautiful highlight. And then I'll just take that excess down the nose and I'll bring a little bit up here. I just think this step just adds that dimension back to the skin so it looks even better. And I think everything looks absolutely perfect. So I'm just gonna add one more step because I just want to set the very center of my face just to ensure the product doesn't move. And I want to go in with a blurring powder because again, I want everything to look really blurred and filtered on the skin, but without looking heavy on the skin. So for that, I'm going to take this Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder. I really like this because it doesn't add any coverage. It doesn't add any texture onto the skin. It just blurs the skin and adds a little bit more of a mattifying effect. So I'm literally just pressing it right here where I have pores, and then the middle of my chin, middle of my nose, center of my forehead, and that is all. I'm not going to put powder anywhere else. This is truly an undetectable powder on the skin, but everything, again, just looks really blurred. So the skin, I love how it looks. Such a beautiful look if you want the most natural looking skin like finish. And I'm going to quickly do the eyes. Let's just do them on camera just so you get the full look. I'm just going to use the Chantecaille Sunbeam Cheek and Eye Shade in the shade Ray. And I'm going to just take this on my fingertips because I'm going to do such an easy look. Just applying this all over the lid. This is going to be really subtle. Not even going to use a brush for this. I just went ahead and added this Gucci mascara, the La Obscura mascara in the shade black. And I am going to tight line with this waterproof, this is, sorry, the Hourglass waterproof gel eyeliner in the shade Cave, which is a nice brown shade. So I'm just going to tight line and go in the upper waterline here. I typically like to do this off camera, but some of you guys like to see this. So in the upper waterline, just so that I don't have that harsh line that goes from my lash line to the mascara, it just, there's just a little bit of a gap when you don't tight line this little area here. So it's in the upper waterline. It can feel a little awkward at first, but it really makes the biggest difference if you want your makeup to look more complete. And actually it does look a little bit more natural. And I like this shade because it's a brown. So again, the brown is going to be a little bit more natural than a black. And finally, the lips. I'm taking the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheek in the shade Pillow Talk. I'm just going to line the lips. So I lined and filled in the lips. And I'm going to take this Merit Signature Lightweight Lipstick in the shade Baby. And I'm going to apply it all over the lips again. And then, as always, I like to really blend this product into the skin or into the lips so that I don't have lipstick sitting on top of the lips. I like it all to be kind of infused and become one so that it doesn't actually look like I have detectable lipstick on the lips. I just like everything to be a little more lived in. It looks a little bit more, more natural. So I turned off the ring light I have because sometimes the ring light just doesn't give the most accurate representation because, of course, it has a little bit of light and it. it is um, adding brightness to the skin. But this is the skin up close and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Now I don't use any filters on my videos or anything like that. This is just my real life skin, my real life skin texture with no lighting. I don't use any studio lighting. This is just the natural daylight coming through my window. So I have nothing, no filter, no lighting at all on my skin. This is just the camera. So you can see how natural it looks on the skin. But that is it for this video. As you couldn't tell, the putting together the skin is actually relatively quick because 
it just, it's so much easier than applying powder over top to blend everything in. I just feel like this technique, this hack is such a game changer if you want that naturally perfected, flawless, but blurred look that looks beautiful, it looks skin-like, it looks amazing in person, it looks amazing in real life, up close on the skin, because you can't actually see that makeup sitting on the skin. It just looks very beautiful in person. This is one of my favorite hacks to use. It's just such a beautiful technique, and it would look beautiful for every event. You can use it during the daytime because again, it's very natural, but in the evening, it is also very stunning. Um, just again, because it looks really pretty in person. So when people are next to you at an event, it's going to look very, very gorgeous. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.